In the grand scope of fighting games, there are obviously a ton of different characters that have come and gone, all with varying styles, designs, and other stuffs to make them unique. I think we all have that one favorite character that just for whatever reason hasn't been in a recent fighting game. So I decided to throw together a quick video on some of my favorite fighting game characters that have been neglected for quite some time now. My only real requirement for this video is basically if they haven't been in the last incarnation of their fighting game, they're fair game to pick. So for instance, if they were in Street Fighter V, they don't count. They also just can't have been in a fairly recent fighting game in general and what I mean by this is, is as much as I'd like to include Skullomania and Doctrine Dark in this vid they were in flex so they don't count either onto the characters proper though my first pick for this list is Sodom. Now Sodom, much like Cody, Guy, Hugo, Poison, Lucia, Mackie, and Abigail, was originally a Final Fight character, him being the boss of Stage 2 in the original game. Sodom made his Street Fighter debut in Street Fighter Alpha 1, Warrior's Dreams. Sodom's gimmick was that he was an American Japanophile, his attire being an interesting hybridization of an American football player's outfit with Japanese Kabuto, Geita, and him using weapons too. Japanese weapons, of course. Katanas in Final Fight, and if you pick Exism in Alpha 3, Three, and Jitae for the rest of the Alpha incarnations. In Alpha 3 specifically, Sodom was actually a super top tier character for a good bit of different reasons. Great damage, insane abuser, the Vism system, and some really good moves in normals too. His slide was safe for god's sake, and that's insane enough to me. You also have one of his command throws, Daikyo Burning, which gives good damage and has ridiculous corner carry. Sodom also had this little roll in his moveset too, which basically negated a lot of characters Okazime options on him, making him even stronger. I love Sodom for the cool stuff he was capable of, of course, but I was also just a big fan of his design. I think it's finally time he makes a comeback in Street Fighter 6, especially since, well, his truck, where he sells various articles of clothing, is right there in the world tour mode. You know though, he was actually very close to making it into Street Fighter 5, but he, for some reason, lost his slot to Birdie, of all characters. Even though I think Sodom working under Karin Kanzuki would have made way more sense than Birdie, but I digress. Anyway, let's go to the next character now. My second pick, for someone who desperately needs to return would be everybody's favorite little tomboy in Makoto. Makoto, as said, is a cute tomboy character who made her debut in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and also managed to return in the Super Street Fighter 4 incarnation of 4, with that series being her last appearance in the franchise so far. I like Makoto primarily because she's the dirtiest fighter in Street Fighter. This bitch chokes you, and she also punches you right in the dick. Absolutely amazing. Playstyle-wise, Makoto is a super aggressive rushdown character. She was so much fun to play and watch as well. If you're ever feeling a bit bored and want to watch some exciting Street Fighter, watch any Haitani Makoto match from Street Fighter 4. All of those fights were absolute fucking balls to the wall Street Fighter action. Which is why she would be perfect for Street Fighter 6, an already aggressive rushdown centric game, and so she'd fit in perfectly, of course, and probably be able to abuse the drive rush system like crazy, like all the good characters do. She'd probably be even more insane since she already has a really super fast ground dash too. Plus the command grab choke insane okay before you say this is a street fighter only video though let's do a quick lateral move to the other side of the fighting game spectrum with mortal kombat and the one character that i think should return more than anything in mortal kombat is hotaru hotaru made his first appearance in mortal kombat with mortal kombat deception and of course he made it to armageddon before much like 90 percent of 3d era characters was totally forgotten by nrs in the classic mk lore hotaru is a commanding officer in the order realm one of the many realms in the mk world and one that's recognized by its incredibly strict laws. Laws so strict, in fact, that protagonist character from MK Deception, Shijinko, was jailed for decades for simply not observing a curfew. Design-wise, Sotaro has a cool samurai-esque look, an aesthetic enhanced by being mixed with the look of a firefly, which, fun fact, Hotaru is Japanese for firefly, so yeah, it all just kind of makes sense. Even cooler than his base outfit with the ghostly white hair and the dual flags, though, is his alt, which has the full face mask to enhance how awesome this look is. God, I love this alt so much. So good. Move-wise, Hotaro didn't really have a super deep moveset though. He has this lava fireball, which does launch at least. And he has this little jump kick sequence, and that was pretty much it. 
I think they might have given him another move in Armageddon. I just don't remember what it is. If they're gonna bring him back, they could probably expand his move list with more lava-based attacks, and maybe they could also implement his Naginata as part of his basic moveset, too. He should definitely, definitely come back, though. And I mean as a playable character. I swear to fucking god, if Hataru gets relegated to a cameo, I will puke. We already have Havoc in the game, too, so having Hataru as his opposite, even if the whole Chaos Order Realm stuff is gone now, he can be rewritten a tiny bit to fit in the world of MK. Hell, I'm pretty sure that Havoc's lore mentions Sado as, like, a city, so, you know, it could be, like, a super high constable there. Maybe he could just be a more extreme version of Lee Mei, perhaps. I don't know. On to the next character now, though. Alright, so, Marvel vs. Capcom will probably never come back, but regardless, I can dream, and one of the characters I genuinely do want to come back is classic Jill Valentine. Not RE5 Jill Valentine, that was kind of a tragedy. Classic Jill is, of course, based on her Resident Evil 1 appearance, which won't lie, Resident Evil 1 Jill has my favorite Jill outfit of all time. I love this design, silly as the massive shoulder pads might be. Anyway, Jill's moveset is obviously RE1 centric. She can summon two types of zombies, a crow, and a Cerberus too. Alongside that, she has this parry, which really isn't that useful. And uh, she can also pop grenade launcher shots out too. Makes sense, right? I'm also very amused by one certain thing in her move list. Captain America has this move called Charging Star. Jill has this Charging Shoulder Ram. It's called Charging Stars. She also has a rocket launcher super, which is a callback to the finale of Resident Evil 1, obviously. Most awesomely, her strongest super, though, is where she summons the Tyrant from Resident Evil 1. Which is awesome too, of course. I've heard that Classic Jill would be an unlikely comeback pick if there was ever another Marvel vs. Capcom, as Frank West kind of fills a similar functionality to her, but I think there'd be room for both in any new MVC or any spiritual successor. On to the next character, though. I said I'd stay off Street Fighter for a bit, but I have two more Street Fighter characters to talk about now. You can't really do a video like this without mentioning Dudley, of course. Dudley first debuted in Street Fighter 3, the new generation, and managed to get into Super Street Fighter 4 as well, with that game being his last playable appearance. Dudley was Street Fighter's second boxer character and was basically the entire opposite to Balrog in style. Dudley was more focused on footwork and technique versus the raw brutality that Rog showed off. Gameplay-wise, Dudley was a super close-in fighter with a ton of mix-up potential, a lot of feints, and a nice duck too to avoid fireballs. He had a really deep, cool moveset that just made him a treat to watch in Street Fighter 3 and 4 too. Honestly, if you've never seen this character in action, definitely check out some Street Fighter 4 smug Dudley. That man with this character was just total poetry in motion, man. Alright, last Street Fighter character now for the video, then we'll close with some totally different. I am definitely in the minority of wanting this fella back, but I love El Fuerte, and I really want him to return in Street Fighter 6. Fuerte debuted in Street Fighter 4 as a hyperactive luchador who was on a quest to create the finest dish ever for a Street Fighter, which ended up with him crossing Chanko, Nabe, and Borscht to no one's approval. Fuerte was a very quick-moving character, and actually most of his game plan revolved around one move in particular in his kit, the Habanero Dash. <laughs> which was a quick command dash that could go both forward or backwards, and could be cancelled into a variety of different moves, including multiple throws, a body press, a sliding kick, and just a leap to get away from his opponents if need be. This allowed Fuerte to be a very devilish mix-up character, with options for almost any situation, really. If you've never seen a good Fuerte in action, check out Pepe Day, god of the character, and now I think it's time for El Fuerte to return to the streets to fight. Or maybe, just like all the other unpopular male characters, they'll make a female version of him. Work for Fang. Worked for Abel, am I right, boys? Okay, though, I promised to make the last one different, so here we go. The USA Sports Team. 
That's right, boys. The single most trampled on set of characters in all of fighting game history. The USA sports team, consisting of an ex-boxer turned rapper, Heavy D, Karateka basketball star Lucky Globber, and brutal football player Brian Battler made their King of Fighters debut in KOF 94, disappeared until KOF 98, and have never been seen again thereafter. Except in the mobile game, I guess, but I'm not counting that. Because SNK just finds the joke where their invitations get stolen by some other team just oh so hysterical, even though it isn't and never has been. To break down the members a bit now, team Team leader Heavy D is another boxer character, one well, that's pretty different and interesting from the many boxers I've seen in fighting games. He, of course, has a move list of all punches, as is boxer tradition, of course. He's also a very high damage, brutal rushdown character, but he's also one of the only boxers I've seen that has a slight projectile in his kit, this sandblast thing right here. <laughs> More unique, Heavy D has this move, which gives him some additional hits on many of his specials, boosting his damage even further. He also has a rad American Eagle tattoo on his back. God bless America. Team number number two is Lucky Glauber. Lucky Glauber is a Karateka who is also a professional basketball player, and these two disciplines are reflected in his moveset. Yeah, that's right, Sean wasn't the first character to use basketballs in a fighting game. Lucky drew direct inspiration from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, mainly the character he played in Game of Death, with Lucky's default colors even being of the LA Lakers, the team Jabbar played for if you're not in the know about basketball, of course. Lucky also has a sweet dunk move as one of his command normals, which is super deadly in combination with the short hops KOF is known for. <laughs> Glabber also has this insane command dash too. I mean, how, look how fast and far this thing goes. I'm also a really big fan of his little super move called the Hellbound. It's a cool little lava geyser. One of my favorites, simple as it is. Lastly though, but not leastly for sure, and my personal favorite member of the trio, Brian Battler. Brian is an American football player who really, really enjoyed the tackling portion of the game, and since he was so violent, Heavy D picked him up for the team. Brian's move list is basically powerful strikes with various tackles and some chain grabs too, ones that do big boy damage in conjunction with everything else in his kit, of course. <laughs> Brian's chain grabs are actually some of my favorites in fighting games, to be honest. Additionally, Brian also has a forward tackle, which guard points certain attacks, and a Shoryu air tackle for anti-airing, of course. Brian Tornado, though, which is not only the funniest move I have ever seen in a fighting game, is also one of my favorite random-ass neutral tools in any fighting game. But seriously, it's definitely the most troll shit I've ever seen in any game ever. If SNK ever wised up and put Brian back in a KOF, you'd see hundreds of bits on Twitter bitching about this move. It'd be great. Brian's anti-air super, the American Supernova, is also one of my favorite supers too. Even better with its max mode. <laughs> But I also kind of have a fetish for anti-air grab supers. And he also has another hilarious super where he just fucking torpedoes you. Yeah. All in all, these three fighters are so fucking sick, and the joke of them getting their invites stolen has run its course, SNK, so it's high time they finally come back. Though probably not till the next KOF, since it seems SNK is going full bore with that new Garu game now. Anyway, that's where this video is going to end. For some engagement baiting, tell me what neglected fighting game character you think should finally make his or her triumphant return to their respective franchise. As always, friends, my name is Hades Manticore, and this is your channel is City State Manticore. Sure to drop a fat like to help my channel out, and subscribe too, since, as always, there's more content to come. See y'all in the next one. Goodbye.